Sveiki, gerbiami skruptum konferencijos dalyviai. Sveikinu jūs visų pirma su pirmąją vasaros dieną. Tikiuosi, kad šią vasarą pradėti skruptum konferenciją bus tas sprendimas, kurio jūs džiaugsitės. Jo labiau, kad esate visi turbūt jau sėkmingai pabūdę su mūsų renginio kava, Coffee Spell. Ir Mūsų šios dienos konferencijos tema, kaip žinote, yra tarių pastatų ateitis, bioklimatinė architektūra, inovatyvi inžinierija ir medinė statyba. Aš esu Marius Dirgėla, Lietuvos architektų sąjungos kūrybos direktorius ir nuo savo organizacijos be abejo turiu labai pasidžiaugti, privalau netgi pasidžiaugti tuo, kad mes jau keletą metų bendradarbiavome su struktum, rengdami šias konferencijas ir raginame ir skyvečiame juose dalyvauti taip pat ir mūsų organizacijos narius architektus, kurie nori sužinoti daugiau ne tik tai apie tai, kaip daiktai atrodo, bet ir kaip jie veikia. Ir kaip veikia, kaip sukasi mūsų supantis pasaulis. Mūsų šios dienos pranešėjų žvaigždyną matote ekrane. Kviečiu mūsų šios dienos pirmąjį pranešėją. Tai yra ponas Joris Ferhyst. Jis yra kompanijos Vikona komercijos direktorius Šiaurės rinkai. Jo pranešimo tema matote ekrane. Nevarginsiu jūsų skaitydamas. Prašau. Dėkiu. First of all, I'm very sorry, but I don't speak Lithuanian. So we have to do it in English, French, German, Spanish or Dutch. I think English will be okay. Um, so, hello everybody. Uh, what I want to do in today's presentation is actually in quite a short time give you an insight in our sustainability strategy. You know, today is all about sustainability. I want to learn to you what was the journey that we started, let's say, five, six years ago. Um, for those that don't know, and now I have to go to the next slide in one way or the other. It's okay, yeah. It should work, yes. What uh, we actually do in the Vicona world, we are an aluminum system supplier. So what does this mean? Our company develops and sells systems where you can make aluminum windows, aluminum doors, facades, big facades, uh, sliding systems, of which you see here some, uh, some projects which you will most likely recognize. Uh, and that's our world. So everything what you see as an aluminum system in a building, that's what we supply. So why did we start uh, working on the sustainability strategy? Well, it's very obvious. The first reason is climate change. We all are part of this story. We all know what it's uh, about. We know, and this was on the news last week, that uh, the, 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 we are looking at at least 1.5 degrees increase in the future, and the likelihood for this is already 66%. So climate change is really something that is affecting all of us, and all of us in our daily life in our construction, we will to need to change uh, because we cannot continue like we currently do it. But on top of that, we know that in the next uh, decades, we will have another 2 billion people more on the globe. So we have to reduce the impact of humanity, but we will have to reduce that with an additional 2 billion people. So that's quite a big challenge. And we also know that most of these people in the future, they will live in cities. 70% will live in cities. So the way that we operate, the way that we organize, that we do master planning of cities will have to change. We have to take care of pollution. We have to take off care of acoustics. We have to take care of, let's say, wildlife in cities and so on. So quite a big challenge. And what we also see is that in the last uh, year, let's say, due to the energy crisis, we are now confronted with uh, increase in material costs. We are being confronted with uh, labor cost increase, which means that also the way that we are using materials and the way that we have to build will have to be more efficient. We need to reduce mat material usage. We need to be more efficient in the production process in order to be affordable in the future. So for those people that say, okay, yeah, it's not really my problem, uh, I, I think that legislation will push us uh, into that. Why? Because, you know, Europe, it's a front runner in that. Uh, Europe has said, okay, we have some climate ambitions, we have to take care of climate change, 
So we will start imposing legislation. So for people that say, okay, it's not really my problem, I don't think you will have a choice anymore. You will really have to be part of this journey. Yeah? Um, and that's actually definitely for the construction world, because the construction, directly or indirectly, it's responsible for 39% of global CO2 emissions. So this means that governments are really looking at construction world, at, at buildings. Yeah? We really have to change. So that's why we created in the Wikona world a new campaign, which is called Build Beyond Tomorrow. It's, it's a holistic approach of how we approach things to be future-proof in the construction world as an aluminium system supplier. And what is Build Beyond Tomorrow all about? It's actually about three levels. First of all, we have been focusing a lot on products. Um, yeah, on products. And this is the part where I will actually spend most of my time today to talk about what we did in order to improve our products from a sustainability perspective. Secondly, we are talking about the company, so we have done a lot of efforts to reduce the impact of our company. And thirdly, we are looking at society. And this is us. This is us together. What can we do as a system supplier together with you in order to reduce the effect on climate change? Yeah? So, in my world, I'm now working in the company for about 23 years. I think the biggest change that we have had in our company is when we started looking at a building, not only from a use stage, where you have a performance criteria, but really looking at the full life cycle of a building from a carbon perspective. This really was an eye opener for us. So, we still need to focus a lot on the use stage. Yeah? So you go from a uh, design of a building, you go to the material choice, you go to the use stage, which is the 30, 40 years that you are using the building. And then you need to consider the this assembly, the dismantling, the demolition of a building. So when you look at the use stage, as I already said, 39% of global CO2 emissions related to buildings, 72% of that is still in the use stage. The way that we are cooling and heating our buildings, so that's where we are still focusing on. But what will also become more important is the construction phase. And I will first talk a little bit about use stage, and then we will go to the construction stage. For the people that are in the architecture world or in the consultancy world, you know, buildings are becoming more and more complex. You know, in the past, the criteria were quite limited, but nowadays, when you are thinking about the new building, the amount of parameters that you see there, it's really quite complex and you need to find a balance between all these parameters. But what I like a lot is that sustainability now is becoming part of our daily life. So it's not only anymore about performance criteria, it's also about sustainability. And that's really very positive that we see that this becomes a daily topic. So what are we working on as an aluminium system supplier? Of course, we are still working on thermal insulation. You know, triple glazing, <clears throat> it's something which I have seen yesterday in uh, Lithuania. This is normal, but if you talk to the countries in the south of Europe, triple glazing, it's really not yet a big topic. Yeah? We need to improve thermal insulation of buildings in order to do a reduction of the cooling and the heating of the buildings. Um, secondly, we also need to consider building connections because you can have a window which is perfectly airtight and weathertight, but there's no point in having a very good performing windows if the connection to the building is not good. And that's where we still see a lot of leakages. Yeah? So we are focusing on new technologies to install the window into the building. Yeah? Thirdly, what we are also uh, working on a lot is the whole energy balance of a building. So what is the complexity you need to balance between ventilation, natural ventilation, the night cooling principles, together with solar shading, how do we keep the light out or how do we attract the light in. We are also looking at building automation and we are also looking at energy production, where you can, for instance, put solar panels inside of the facades. Yeah? So, it's a whole combination of new technologies where we find a good balance. So, 
The last element on the use stage where we are really investing a lot of our resources in is modular construction. Yeah. You have seen that I was talking about labor costs and material usage. The traditional way of making a building is no longer sustainable. Yeah. We need to become more efficient. We need to go to, let's say, an industrialized way of producing a house or a, producing an office block or a school or a government building. It needs to be more efficient. And that's what we in our world do with modular construction with unitized principles. So what you see here is one of our projects where you see that we are working with the core of the building, which is concrete. And we, as an envelope supplier, we are actually putting an envelope on the building and after 30 years, we will be able to take out the envelope and we will put a new envelope with new technologies and also with maybe a change of the building from, a, from an office block to an apartment block, for instance. Yeah? So modular construction, controlled environment for us is the future. And as you can see in these three examples, you know, these are modular constructions. From an architectural point of view, there are no big limitations anymore because we see you have three totally different buildings, but we can make all types of designs with modular construction. So, we talked about the use stage. Now, let's go back to the upfront emissions. Upfront emissions in the future will be about 50% of the total building life cycle. Why? because the use stage of a building will become more and more and more and more efficient. Yeah? So what is the next step? We need to focus on upfront emissions. Which materials do we use for our building? How will we build the building? Yeah? And that's where we actually made quite a, quite a revolution. So if you take an example of an office block, we have made a research on that, and here you see a split of materials from a carbon perspective of an office building. You see that the choices between the materials will have to be made. Designers, architects, they will have to make an analysis. Which materials should I choose? Should I go for more concrete? Should I go for more glass? Should I start introducing wood? Should I look for new materials? And I'm certain that in the next 10 years, the change of materials will be visible because certain materials are more sustainable than other materials. Yeah? If you look at our part, fenestration and facades, we are accounting about 13%. Um, yeah. If you uh, look at the window, for instance, from a weight perspective, of course, the glass is the most important. You know, the glass, it accounts for the weight, it's 60% of the weight of a window. But from a carbon footprint perspective, it's totally different because if you start calculating a window from a carbon perspective, actually our component, the aluminium, it's actually the worst. Yeah? But we are coming with new solutions and this I will show you today. What um, is happening in the aluminium world is actually not so positive. So in the world, aluminium is still produced globally, unfortunately, with a lot of coal. Yeah? That's of course not good. You see, China, India, and all these countries are still using coal to produce aluminium. In the Middle East, they use gas. But in Europe, luckily, we are now looking at hydropower, a renewable energy to make aluminium, and then we reduce the footprint quite considerably. So that's where we made a revolution in our world, uh, which is four years ago, we started introducing new alloys. And this is quite an important picture. So if you have a traditional one kilogram of aluminium that you produce in the world, you generate about 16.7 kilos of CO2, on average, globally. When you look at Europe, we are doing already quite good because depending on whether you take into account import or not, we are between 8.6 and 6.7. Yeah? for producing one kilo of aluminium. But then, in the hydro world, we started to introduce new alloys, new aluminium, which is based on renewable energy. And secondly, we are producing aluminium 
based on recycled content. And this is where we are really changing the world. What we are currently doing, we are actually using old windows, old aluminium doors, old facades, old sliding systems. We are collecting them into our facilities and we are recycling them to make new windows. And this is really where we are making a big difference because we are reducing the footprint from 8.6 on average in Europe to 2.3 by taking 75% on average of post-consumed scrap. Yeah? So that's quite a big impact. We are not using scrap from extrusion process. We are really taking back old windows and recycling them to new windows. So, um, you see that it's not only on the global warming potential that we make an improvement. On all the sustainable parameters, we are actually improving our footprint of our products considerably by recycling. And recycling, not only for our world, but for a lot of building materials, will be the future to reduce the footprint of buildings. At the moment, in the Wicona offer, we have windows, doors, sliders, facades. Everything is now based on recycled content. Yeah? So this means that anybody in Europe that wants to buy one window or, or has one house or one full building out of Wicona will get recycled content. And of course, people say, yeah, but Yuri's uh, recycled material quality cannot be good and so on. This is not true. We are aluminium experts. We guarantee the same quality of the recycled material compared to the primary material. Yeah? This is quite a big revolution. But it doesn't stop. Yeah? So, we have a, a premiere for, for last month. In our group, we have been able to make the first project, which is made out of 100% recycled aluminium. And this is the project. It was designed by uh, Hadi Teherani Architects, it's based in Germany in Augsburg, it's called Innovationsbogen. And this is the first project in the world that has been produced based on 100% recycled aluminium. So we take 100% old windows and we recycle them to entirely new facades. Quite a big revolution. And this is the future. Why can we not offer 100% on everything? Simply said, because the production process is not efficient enough. We are investing in new technologies, and maybe in 5-10 years, we will move from 75% recycled content to 100%. But at the moment, the technology has to be improved. Okay. I talked a lot about aluminium, but that's not the end. So as you can see, this is a cross-section of a window. The middle of a window, there's a lot of synthetic components. Yeah? Polyamide. Why do we need polyamide? Very simply said, aluminium is very conductive. You need to make it insulating. So we put synthetic materials inside of our products to make it insulating. We are now moving, or we have moved, to move these materials from primary materials also to recycled content. So we are taking parts from cars, we are taking parts from carpet industry, we are taking parts from airbag industry, into new polyamides to make new windows. Yeah. And that's where we come to a new campaign. So we move away from only aluminium, we go to a full system. Yeah. So on the new products, this is a new facade that we have launched very recently. 75% of this facade, it's based on recycled content. Not only aluminium, but we are also using plastic bottles to make our insulators. We are making polyamide recycled materials. Everything based on recycled content. And secondly, 95, with the technology that we currently have, our facade in 30, 40 years from today, you can take it back and 95% of the material can be recycled. Yeah? Circular economy, this is the future. Yeah? So, Let's talk about greenwashing. Everybody in the construction world is saying we are green, we have green products, but how do our customers, how do the end user know if it's real or not? Yeah? And that's where EPDs come in. So what we do now in our software, we are actually working with independent auditors and we have developed a software which can calculate one window, one building, one 
huge project and give you on a paper the footprint of that material. Why do you need that? Because you need to start comparing. Yeah? How do you know that our facade is more ecological than the other facade? How do you know? With an EPD. So these are some examples of EPDs where you can find all the details. It's, it's approved by an independent uh, party. Uh, and that's what we do. We work with independent companies in order to prove what we are saying that it's real. Because we can say whatever we want, but we have independent auditors to confirm that. So these are some pro process certificates. Again, independent auditors. These are certificates from our suppliers. We work with our suppliers to ask them for every component. Can you please give us the official EPD that we know what is the footprint? Yeah? With official documents. So, then you have cradle to cradle. Our systems are at least silver certified. This is another proof to show what is, let's say, the green footprint of our products. Yeah. And then finally, you have the ASI, the Aluminium Stewardship Initiative. This is something you can compare like FSC for wood, but we have it for aluminium, which is looking at our company from an environmental, social and governance perspective how we are producing everything. Are we taking care of our people? Are we taking care of the environment? Are we doing everything in an official way? So that's what we do with ASI. Yeah? Um, okay, this was everything I wanted to talk about products. I only have a couple of slides left. Let's talk about the next step. So you see in the Wicona world, we are quite well ready for the future on the product side. But since, let's say, the last three years, we also have been working on how we operate as a company. Yeah? Because the product, this is one area. Now we need to talk about how we as a company operate. What are we doing? We are investing in solar panels. We are investing in windmills. We are investing everything on renewable energy in all of our production and offices. Yeah? We are working on no landfill by next year. No more waste. Yeah? Next one. Transport. We are working with transport companies to move everything to biofuel. We are moving to new technologies on transport. We are changing our packing from plastic to cardboard to, to other sustainable materials. We are working on office environment. Everything that we can do to reduce our footprint. We are even sponsoring electrical bikes for our staff to go by bicycle to work instead of taking a car. Yeah? We are then working on gender equality. We are looking at respect in our company. We are looking at personal commitment. And this is really something very important because what is crucial for any company that wants to move into a sustainable strategy, you need to have all the people on board. It's not only the boss that can say, yeah, from today we are sustainable. No, it needs to be part of the culture. And this takes a lot of energy, a lot of time. But, but we are getting there. Where are we now? We have an ambition comparing 2018 to 25. Our group wants to reduce the footprint by 50%. Where are we now? We are currently already at 35%. Wow. It's starting to show results. Yeah? We have a new target by end of the year, 38. And then two years from here, we want to reduce by 50%. That's quite a challenge. So, last topic, society. What is really important? We have to work together because we are only one player and that's why I'm quite happy to be here today. We need to start changing the construction world together. We cannot do it as one player. Yeah? So you see in the audience a lot of companies that are actually already working on that, and that's the only way we can change the world, by working together, which means that we are investing a lot of time in working with our customers to train them, to show them what are the new technologies, what is the footprint of the products, and so on. We want to also work with our suppliers. Uh, we want to know where do we get our gaskets from, do they come from which country, how is this produced, are you using coal, are you using renewable energy, and so on together. And then finally, we are working with a lot of partners now, yeah, like you, to really do projects together 
and to come up with new technologies to change the full life cycle of the building. Also in the design stage, we need to set together to, to think about the building, not only for the first 30, 40 years, but what do we do with the building after 30, 40 years? Do you want to demolish it? Do you want to transform it, renovate it? We need to work together. And that's where we started also working together with Saint-Gobain. Saint-Gobain was one of the first glass suppliers that made a recycled glass. We are now working and pushing new facades, not only on the aluminium part, our part, but also on the glass part, to reduce the footprint. And it's working. It's starting really to get some, some noise. Good. So that was my story. Uh, I hope that you see that we are in a quite challenging world. Um, we are not talking about 50 years, we are talking about 10 years, 20, 30 maximum, where we will have to really change the world of the construction because we have some challenges on the climate. Yeah? We need to do this together, but as you see, we show you examples that it's happening now that we are ready for that. So the only thing I can ask is really join us in this journey and uh, help each other because it's possible and uh, yeah, we need to think about the next uh, generations. Good, that was uh, my part. So if you have any questions, we have some website also to talk about this story.